Ja, herzlich willkommen zur nächsten Folge Business and Books. Auf dieses Gespräch freue ich mich sehr, denn es ist mit Sigrun. Sigrun ist seit ungefähr zwei Jahren meine Business-Mentorin und sie ist auch die führende Business-Mentorin für weibliche Online-Unternehmerinnen in Europa. Sie ist TEDx-Speakerin und Host der Sigrun Show und kommt ursprünglich aus Island. Ja, da hat sie ähm, aber nur ihr halbes Leben verbracht, schreibt sie selber. Ähm, die andere Hälfte war sie in Deutschland unterwegs, Großbritannien und lebt auch nach wie vor zur Hälfte in der Schweiz. Ähm, und sie hat eine ganz besondere Mission. Sie möchte Gleichberechtigung erreichen und sagt, um Gleichberechtigung zu erreichen, müssen mehr Frauen finanziell unabhängig sein. Dadurch passiert das quasi automatisch und deswegen unterstützt sie vor allem weibliche ähm, ja, Menschen, ähm, ein Online-Business aufzubauen von null bis zu einer Million Jahresumsatz. Also sie hilft eben ein Online-Business aufzubauen und zu skalieren, um mehr weibliche Unternehmerinnen in diese finanzielle Unabhängigkeit zu bringen. Und sie hat dazu selbstverständlich ein Buch geschrieben, Kickstart Your Online Business heißt es. Und neben ganz vielen wunderbaren, inspirierenden Erfolgsgeschichten ist äh, auch meine dabei. Und jetzt freue ich mich sehr auf das Gespräch. Herzlich willkommen, Sigrun. Thank you very much um, for speaking with me today and talk to me and share a bit about your mission and your book. So I already introduced you to the audience and talked about your great mission you have in your business that let me follow you for the last um, two years and a lot of other women too. So what is your story um, that led you to this mission? I know there's a great story behind it. Yeah. So uh, I think I was brought up in the belief, like I had always this belief that I can do anything. I, I didn't realize the differences between girls and boys, not really internally. And uh, and I truly be believed that I could do anything. And uh, it was confirmed when I was nine years old and we had the first female president. Mm -hmm. I was so inspired that a woman was elected. She was... Uh, a divorced mother with an adopted daughter. Uh, she had just gone through cancer therapy. One of her breasts had been removed hmm. and her opponents used it against her, which I think is horrible. Uh, it would not go through uh, today a uh, behavior like that. Um, but it was also a woman who wasn't in politics before. So I felt like, wow, she was like, It was almost as if she didn't have the experience and the education to be president mm -hmm. and even the profile and still she made it. And I'm not sure I realized all of that as I was a nine year old uh, girl, but uh, it it grew on me kind of like how important the shift was for not just me, but women in Iceland and beyond Uh, that she came like out of nowhere and became a president. And she was president 16 years. Mm. And I think some boys asked like, can a man be a president? Which I thought uh, was a great thing. Yeah, so this was kind of uh, in this time where also uh, women had been standing up for themselves. I was too young to experience this, but in 1974, uh, women went on the streets in Reykjavik And I'm talking about 100,000 women went on the street. All the women decided that one day they would not work. They would not cook. They would not clean. They wouldn't take care of the kids. They would just strike. Mm -hmm. There was a woman strike. And uh, it absolutely collapsed the economy. And they asked for equal pay and, uh, you know, just more equality. Uh, maybe not the same demands we have today, but back then in the days, just like, you know, more worth, uh, more value for what they were delivering to the economy. And it was very obvious from that time, there was this movement going on. And uh, out of that, a female party was founded. This is also when I was fairly young and I'm not really realizing what's happening in the 70s. And um, the female party was a very interesting concept because. Uh, There were women that came from the right and the left together. They mm -hmm. didn't care 
about the differences in political opinions, they decided it is more important our mission for gender equality than our differences on the political side. And that was beautiful because uh, at this time, I think there was a 5% women in parliament. And when this female party uh, decided, okay, or not, it's enough, I think they were around for 17 years, they had achieved 25% representation in parliament. And now we are probably close to 40% or 50%. I don't know. We're getting there. We're getting there. Mm -hmm. uh, but my my true experience, I had to be a little bit older. This is all happening, but it's important that this is happening. You know, I'm young. I'm not really realizing this is all happening. Women are kind of standing up for their rights. And then I'm 16 years old and I was making my own clothes inspired by my woman and my uh, by my mother and my grandmother. And uh, I wanted to learn how to do patterns, sewing patterns, so I can really just invent my own designs. And I visit the course with a dressmaker. And there are women there that are probably in my age now <laughs> mm -hmm. and uh, me, 16 years old. So we had literally nothing in common except our passion for sewing. Um, so in the breaks, we always had a, a one break in the evening. This was the evening course. And I would just sit and listen to them and not really contribute much to the conversation. And what happened uh, was that they talked about all the dreams, all the unrealized dreams, everything they wanted to do in their lives and had not done. And uh, this happened over eight weeks. And my frustration and anger grew over time. I, I was like, why? Why do they not do it? Now, of course, I didn't ask them. I was just listening. Um, but they had mentioned that they got married and had kids. So I was like, okay, it's not a good idea to have kids. It's not a good <laughs> idea to get married. Like I was like, what's the reason why they're not making their dreams come true? Yeah. And um, I was angry. I was really angry. And not at the women, at society for creating such society where in, in my mind as a 16 year old, uh, mm -hmm. men can realize their dreams and women cannot. Uh, or they do not believe it because society accepts all these excuses of, you know, having kids and husband and whatever. And, you know, at that time we had kindergarten in Iceland for all kids above two years old. So it's not like they didn't have care for their kids, which actually is the case still in some other countries. I'm mm -hmm. still shocked. I live in Switzerland and uh, kids are four and a half years old when they go to kindergarten. I'm like, mm -hmm. that is crazy. No, no, no wonder that women are not equal in Switzerland. So, uh, but these women, they were just, they didn't believe. I, you know, I was like thinking about this also still today. They didn't believe in themselves and society was fostering this idea of like, hey, you have to put everyone else ahead of yourself. You have to put your kids ahead of yourself, your spouse, your aging parents, uh, a nice home, uh, uh, you know, a home cooked meal. This all comes first before you there to realize your dreams mm -hmm. um and i realized that i want did not want to be one of those women mm -hmm. that was very very clear to me after this experience and it was it it was life changing to me i still today i'm upset when i think about this time how it um, impacted me and maybe you know maybe i was a bit naive 16 year old thinking the world is great and we can have gender equality but it was still a great experience for me to figure out what are my values? What do I believe in? What is my, what do I want to achieve in my life? And I definitely did not want to be one of those women. So first of all, I decided not to have children. Um, I was never into kids before. So yes, this was a life-changing uh, decision, um, but I have two stepsons. So I got bonus children instead uh, and uh, they are great. Uh, they are now 17 and 18, so uh, almost grown up. And uh, I decided not to have a man stop me. I still wanted to get married. I was like, yes, I want to get married. But it's with a man that supports my dreams, doesn't mm -hmm. stop me. Um, the third thing was I wanted to always make my dreams come true and not, you know, confine into what size society believes I should do or shouldn't do or even what I have, maybe you have a dream and you change your mind. That's okay too. So I wanted to really just always have the feeling I would have 
my dreams come true and not have any regrets when I'm old and ugly and cannot move. <laughs> <laughs> and the fourth thing, I want to do something about gender equality. I wanted to have an impact. Mm -hmm. I knew I didn't want to be a politician. I was reading the news every day and it sounded like a horrible <laughs> place to be. And I felt that as soon as someone turned into a politician, they became corrupt and didn't achieve the goals that they want to achieve. So I said, there must be another way. I don't know what it is. I'll find a way later. So that is my why for mm -hmm. accelerating gender equality. And at some point I figured it out. I'll do it through female entrepreneurship. That, But that took me many, many years to figure out. Yes. So amazing. Thank you. Um, and now you published your first book, Kickstart yes. Your Online Business. That's yes. It's also here in the yeah, background. Yeah, and my big frame there. Yes. <laughs> And it's already an Amazon bestseller. Congratulations. So yes. can you tell us uh, what is this book about and how is it connected to your mission? Yeah, so I, for a long time, I was thinking of writing a book. And I think uh, most entrepreneurs carry a book idea within themselves and then they delay the delay uh, starting writing a book. Um, I, I I have another book idea. That was always the first book idea to write about successful women, how they go from zero to making seven figures and interview mostly my clients, but also some other women. And this book was in my mind for a long time. And I was like, hmm, I was going back and forth about this book. I never got started. I never even got started with the interviews. Mm -hmm. And then I realized the best book I could write is actually a book that tells people about my signature program, Kickstart. Mm -hmm. uh, and I hadn't seen this first. I hadn't, you know, because if I write a book about self-made women, like what's the connection to my business? Uh, of course, I can still write that book and I will probably one day. Uh, but I wanted to write a book that, you know, tells people a little bit about what I do in my business and how I can help them. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's infused with my mission, gender equality. Uh, but when I uh, realized that this would be the best way to start with a smaller book, so you can see it's not so thick, uh, mm -hmm. it's probably one third or, yeah, or half of a book, like uh, the regular book you would read, yeah? Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, I I looked at these, uh, they were used to call Kindle singles. There was a concept. Um, and they tackle one kind of problem. Instead of being like, oh, I can solve all your problems and you can go from zero to seven figures. Like, you know, that takes maybe four or five years or longer to actually achieve. So putting that all to, into a book is like... A, massive undertaking and you will have to skip a lot of details you will not have clear instructions I always love clear instructions and so when I heard about this concept of Kindle singles and how you actually as a new author it is better to uh, come out with a shorter book that solves one problem to break through the noise of Amazon and books mm -hmm. If you write a book about, uh, you know, <laughs> how to become a millionaire or whatever, there are probably a gazillion other books with the same title. And when people search on Amazon, they will look at the reviews or, you know, or how many awards someone has. And they were like, oh, I'll go to this person. So they always go to the most known person and you don't have a chance, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's important as a new author to niche 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 down and uh so i, I would I, 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 I this concept made a lot of sense to me mm -hmm. and so i realized that the original book idea i had is better done later not stop not, you know doesn't mean i can't do it ever uh but it's better to start with a shorter book well it takes also less time to write so that's a good thing and write something on a very specific topic and i was like okay what is that very specific topic it's your most successful online course. It's your signature course. Mm -hmm. and I was like, wow, okay. So then I already know what to write about. And I found this concept so intriguing. And uh, I started to get going. And, I was, and then I got really worried. Well, but 
if I write about my course, my most successful course, will people buy the course? Mm -hmm. And that's the clue where it comes in. It's impossible in, uh, you know, I don't know, 100, 100 something pages. Uh, yeah, 120 pages. You can't really write everything that's in the course. So this is like a summary. It's like an introduction. Uh, you have enough information that people know exactly how everything works, the method, the process. But it doesn't mean some people might be able to do it, but that's like 2%. Mm -hmm. The others will realize that they need your help. So it's like, it's a win-win situation. You become an author, your book is out there, strangers on the internet find out about you because you are suddenly with a unique topic. Now, there's probably someone else that also has a book, How to Create an Online Course, but the competition is not as much as How to Make a Million Dollar Business. Mm -hmm. So I realized this was the right approach. I got over myself of like, oh, I'm giving out too much information. It's the same question I get asked all the time by my clients. Should I create content where I tell everything? I said, yes, you should. Because <laughs> it draws us in people. And at the end of the day, they can do it on their own. They will need your help. So you can absolutely tell them your process. Yeah. Eight to ten, you can tell them the whole process. And it's, they were like, and they will feel more trust. They're like, oh, this is how it works. And then they want to be a part of your program. Yeah. So when I started to write it, it was really, I took my program and broke it down into chapters. Uh, but I also realized I had to bring in my mission. Like, where does my mission come in? Uh, even if it's not about gender equality, the book, uh, in chapter two, I think it is, chapter two, uh, I talk about my story. And again, if you just have one chapter to talk about your story, you have to really be picky. You know, you can't tell your whole story. Mm -hmm. And so I decided to focus on the gender equality piece. I folk, I talk about the first female president of Iceland. Actually, she was the first one in the world to be a president, a, a woman president. And I talk about uh, how this became like, uh, you know, my why. Then I jump on over to uh, talking about uh, me wanting to start an online business. And then I talk about my five business ideas that I had. Mm -hmm. And the last one being the business that I actually created. And so it's a really, so I was, I'm, I was already thinking of the next book as I'm writing this. You can take your story and tell other pieces of your story. Mm -hmm. And uh so that was the thinking behind it. So yeah, and it's infused with it. I have it in the introduction right away because even if it's called Kickstart Your Online Business, I am saying it's for women. Although, of course, men can read the book too. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I'm really glad that I was able to, you know, what do you call it? Put a little bit of my gender equality concept into the book, although it is 90% really about how to create an online course and start to make sales online. Yes, thank you. Um, and I can absolutely support what you said. I'm doing Kickstart now in the third uh, time. And it's uh, a huge difference to really do it in your process and to be surrounded by the other people and the support by you and the coaches. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. And um can you tell us about more in which state of your business you publish this book now and how do you use your book for your business? So I think what was really helpful is that I had been running my program five years mm -hmm. because um, I'm not saying that everyone has to have run a program for five years before they write a book, but uh, Kickstart is for let's say beginners advanced beginners also experienced people like yourself uh to create uh the next online course and you know for validating an idea but the book was written written uh so that beginners feel that they can do it um and uh but i wanted to have success stories that also show that experienced business owners are doing kickstart too and it's kick starting their online business. So maybe their business has been stuck at a certain point or, uh, you know, they've just not been able to go from offline to online or something, you know, not be able to build their email list. And this has been catapulting them to the top. So the cool thing about having run Kickstart for so many years and then writing the book is that I have stories in here 
where women are making a million dollars. So I'm getting my, you know, seven figures concept into the book with real stories. Uh, and I didn't spread like all of the book, just seven figure stories. It's I think there are really just two in there. But it's women that honestly did kickstart in 2018. And then five years later, they have a million dollar business. So it was like kind of a proof of concept. So I think if if I had written the book, let's say, three years ago, I wouldn't have necessarily those, you know, golden stories, which I think is really the proof of concept for me, because I teach women like my mantra, my tagline is I help women uh, grow their online business from zero to seven figures. So that also needed to be in the book for me personally. If that doesn't matter to someone, they don't have to wait so long. I think it's just great to have a lot of testimonials. I call them success stories in a book like this for me, because this is really, at the end of the day, a lead magnet. Mm -hmm. Now people have to pay for it on Amazon, but the idea is that this becomes a book funnel. Mm -hmm. And book funnel, I can still decide, and we're still debating in the team, is it going to be absolutely free? Could be. Or am I going to charge maybe $7 for it? Now, I think it's a very valuable book. I put my heart and soul into it. I really... Uh, even though I sometimes wrote like 3,000 words in one day and crazy things like that, you know, I read it through gazillion times. I fixed all the typos, you know, there are always typos in a book. And uh, <laughs> I really, I put my heart and soul into this book. Uh, and the question is, do I really want to give it away for free? I don't know. I want people to value it and read it. So that's a debate we have. Uh, and probably when someone is watching this video, I will have decided which way I go. Um, but there are two concepts. It's really just like different opinions. Uh, my book coach will say, give it away for free. And my business coach will say, sell it for $7. <laughs> is, is, is one or the other right? It doesn't matter. It's more what fits your business. But definitely the book was written with the purpose of it generating leads. Mm -hmm. uh, the purpose is not you know, it's on Amazon and it has amazing reviews there. And if someone is searching Amazon and they'll find me, great, they buy the book. But my goal is to also get people traffic to my website, get them to, you know, find the book with me and I get the email address. Because someone who buys on Amazon, mm -hmm. I don't know, I don't have their email address. So therefore, also in the book, there are five spots, at least five spots, I think, uh, where I mention how they can get the resources. So there are exercises or checklists or overviews uh, that people can get. And then I decided to do the audiobook as well, which is just another way to be out there. And, uh, and the audiobook can be, for instance, in a funnel as well. So let's say the book is for free. And on the thank you page is the audiobook. Mm -hmm. I have made sure that I have the rights to distribute the audiobook as well. You, When you upload an audiobook to Audible, uh, you can decide exclusive, non-exclusive. And uh, I was really kind of like, oh, for 30 seconds, thinking back and forth. And I decided uh, that I wanted to legally be allowed to also sell it on other platforms and my own website. And so that's the decision I took. But that means the, the book will be in more places. I'm less, you know, the, the royalties you get for selling books, it's so little money that, you know, I think you shouldn't even think about it. I think I can now, you know, I've sold a lot of books already on Amazon. I think I can buy two pair of expensive shoes. Wow. <laughs> the shoes I buy are pretty expensive when I buy shoes, uh, but it's it's not going to change my life or change my business, that revenue. So it's really, it's uh, irrelevant. So therefore you think, well, why not, why not give the book away for free? Uh, I've also ordered at least, um, I think I've ordered 400 books already. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And what I do, uh, so I ordered, I live in two places. So I ordered uh, 100 books to Iceland, 100 books to Switzerland. And uh, I found a bookstore in Iceland that was willing to sell the books for me. And that's where I hosted that, an official book launch event. So I didn't just launch my book on, uh, you know, with uh, Facebook Live. Let me see if we can put a focus on this. Yeah, possibly. Um, <laughs> 
uh, I decided I was I was just, you know, I messaged this bookstore. The woman kind of knew me and she said, we're happy to host your book launch event and have your book on sale. And so I brought 100 books to her and uh, immediately the first day they sold 20 books and now they're just in the bookstore, the books. I think that's great because mm -hmm. I don't have the distribution like to all bookstores. I don't need that. Uh, then I have sent out about 100 books. Uh, I sent out books to all of the people mentioned in the book. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and uh, I also sent to my whole team, friends and family, uh, you know, if I'm invited to a dinner party, I bring a book instead of mm -hmm. a bottle of wine. Uh, so I've ordered now, again, 100 books to Switzerland, 100 books to Iceland. And I'm really, I'm just like, if I'm going somewhere, for instance, last week, I was invited to an art exhibition at somebody's home. She has a mm -hmm. studio at home. And I kind of, I met this woman five times before. So not a friend, but an acquaintance. And I'm like, I bring a book. And I write, you know, so I think it's important to see your book, like not just online lead magnet, have physical copies and send out the books at any opportunity. Uh, you know, when I, I'm, I'm, I'm meeting a, a woman I've never met before for dinner uh, in a couple of weeks. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm going to bring my book. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. She might read it. She might not read it. She might know someone who is a great idea client. You just never know. And I think it's important that you just, you think of this as a, it doesn't cost so much, you know, uh, the, the books, you know, you can order author copies from Amazon. So you're not paying the price that everybody else sees. You know, the price might be 15 euro, let's say, uh, for this book to buy. And the author copies you can get for, two euros 50 or three mm -hmm. uh, and then shipping on top of course and then Iceland Switzerland is a bit more expensive so maybe I end up paying five or six dollars a euro per book but think of it that you go to someone's dinner you go for lunch this is this is a really cool thing to just spread your books all the time I give them away I yeah give them away absolutely. as many people as possible yeah and can you um What's your experience with that? Can you uh, already say what's the main outcome by doing this? Like like you uh, mentioned, yeah. Well, yeah. it's been not a long enough time for it. I think mm -hmm. you sometimes have to give type of people uh, time to read the book and everything like that. But uh, I see it from the reviews on mm -hmm. Amazon is when people read the book, they're like, I want to join the program. They're like, they're, they're putting it in the review that they want to join the program. Um, but I'm giving the book also to people that I know are not interested in online business. So they will not personally do it, but I'm hoping that they will mention the book or, you know, give the book maybe to someone else, even if it's assigned to them, uh, you know, someone else to read. So yeah, it's a little bit too early to say, uh, but I just believe that we have to uh, look at old fashioned methods of like, how do you spread the word about your business, what you do? How do you talk easily about it? When you give the book, suddenly people are like, oh, you wrote a book. Tell me more. This conversation doesn't come up necessarily if you don't have something to show. Mm -hmm. uh, because that is quite awkward if you would just go it's like oh hello new person I wrote a book <laughs> versus hello new person here's my new book for you mm -hmm. and you're like oh you know tell me more about it mm -hmm. uh, we have to uh, you know look at uh, marketing a little bit differently we have been so focused on Facebook ads and the narrow targeting that is gone away the narrow targeting has gone away Facebook and other social media is a little bit like tv we yeah. have to be on tv and say you know do you want to start your online business here's my book so think of this as you are going back to basics going back to offline promotions you know if you had flyers or whatever actually one of our kickstart students had flyers which i thought was awesome <laughs> um yeah so Really maximize the potential of your book. Don't think about, oh, Amazon will take care of it. They will not. Mm -hmm. If you do nothing, I can see sales on Amazon go, do, 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 do. only a few sales. If I do something, if I do a live, if I talk about my book, 
Amazon sales go up. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So Amazon will not do the work for you. Amazon is a great search engine. So there will be random people that find you, but you always have to also, you have to be talking about your book all the time and uh, give it uh, the uh, attention that it needs. Uh, so I think I will give this book a year until I allow myself to publish the next book. And because mm -hmm. I have to talk about this book often enough, always show it, always mention it. And then, you know, when I say, okay, now I'm ready and I can start to write the book, next book. I'm just thinking it shouldn't come out until this book has had enough space yeah. to, to get the attention that it deserves. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's a great marketing tool because it's not so pushy and sassy to say, I have a book. <laughs> yes, exactly. And that's yeah. the thing. I think uh, the pushy sales marketing doesn't work anyway. Uh, give people an opportunity to to download your book, uh, charge for it, not charge for it, maybe less relevant. But, you know, that is also um, just a fantastic way to get a conversation going in any setting and people will now say oh, Sigrun is an author and, you know I'm, I'm somewhere at the party and it's like yeah, Sigrun is an author I'm like mm, okay <laughs> <laughs> great so thanks a lot for your great insights and do you have so at the end um, any special advice for other online online business owners or experts who are thinking about writing a book Well, I would say go for it. Uh, I waited very long. Mm -hmm. uh, and even though I said, oh, it was great that I had five years of Samba Kickstart. If I had written a book five years ago, I would just have written a book about something else. It's mm -hmm. not a, you know, it doesn't mean that you have to wait. But I think it's good to have been a few years in business, to have success stories, because that's the power of this book, really. Uh, the success stories are, uh, you know, 28 success stories. It backs up everything that I say so that people don't feel, oh, I'm just saying this works and then there's no backup, no proof. So I think a few years in business and uh, having some sort of a method. Mm -hmm. And maybe you don't realize you have the method until you write the book. That the happens, book, yes. <laughs> the, book can be, the book can be your way of figuring out your method. Mm -hmm. So let's say I had written a book already five years ago. Then I was already three, four years in business. I would just have written about masterminds, let's say, or something like that. And that's okay too. I would not regret having another book. You know, the more books, the better. Dan Sullivan, uh, the coach of the coaches, he coaches Tony Robbins and uh, is known for the book, for instance, Who Not How. Um, mm -hmm. He writes small books. They're even smaller than this. I think they're like half of this. So this one is like 120 pages. So let's say 50, 60 pages. He brings out one each quarter. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. That is more like a ebook, but they're printed and I they get shipped to me because I'm on some sub 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 subscription. <laughs> the word. Um, yeah. And uh, and he takes a concept. So he takes a smaller concept. So I could, for instance, write just one book about how to define your ideal client. Hmm. Because that wouldn't be so long as this. But it could be 50 pages because I could really take people th through a very detailed exercise. And then I could have some proof of how it has helped other women. So the thing is, you don't have to make it like this massive concept. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think it's it's good. To be like this is, this is going to help for the future. Facebook ads are tricky. Organic growth is tricky. Mm -hmm. What is going to help? I'm not saying a book solves all your problems. That would be exaggeration. But it definitely is going to give you another source of uh, lead generation that brings you quality leads. I think readers, like we, we're readers. <laughs> we, are, we, we are quality leads. Like when I buy a book and then I start to follow someone online, I'm a quality lead. It's very likely that I will buy from that person. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you so much <laughs> for the great interview and insights. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for having me. <laughs>